Hey, bro, I think we are live on YouTube. Wait, maybe not. I don't know. Hope I think we, are. we are. We are, in fact, live. Oh, cool. Awesome. How's it going, man? It's going good. I just got a right. notification on the phone. We're good to go. Really? Yes, sir. Super what? fast. Your phone notified you that we're live on yeah. YouTube. Because I... The smartphone. I, I Well, I'm subscribed to your lovely channel, as well as all of you should be. Yes, uh, there go you ahead go. And click, ding, click the little bell and get notified when we go live on Fridays there with this little tip of the week e-commerce conversation show. Yep, yep, yep. And which we like to drop actual practical e-commerce advice from a couple of guys, Jason and myself, who are actual operators and running our e-com businesses each and every day. So that is the gist of it. And we jump on here and try and provide you some value. And that is our goal every week and that's what we're going to do today so absolutely tee us off my friend what are we covering um in this lovely chat yeah let's do it um i think we're going to have a good one today i mean this uh question is top of mind for a lot of e-commerce sellers especially ones who have done retail arbitrage or online arbitrage and then want to go sort of up the food chain i guess you could say into private label and the idea that we want to talk about today is creating a brand uh and logo and really talk it through some of the details of that. And we have consulting clients and, um, you know, people we work with in coaching that we've helped through this process and, you know, everybody's on their own journey with having a brand. Um, and so let's talk about a project we're working on right now. Um, mm -hmm. and we'll talk through sort of where we're at with that. But then of course we both have a background in doing this now, um, created several brands, each of us, um, and uh, so Pixie Fair is sort of our core e-commerce brand on my wife and I's business side. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I can talk through some of how we came up with that name. Um, and then, you know, you, on your side, you've got Lita, which is a yep. fascinating brand name. And then Old Boy. And Old Boy, um, yeah. You want to give us just a, a couple minute overview of how you guys got your brands conceptually put together? Sure. I'll do the same for Pixie Fair. And then we can talk about where we're at with our current project, which is Happy Gardening Live. But yeah, for sure. So Lita was, I personally, I sort of inherited Lita as a brand as I stepped into a partnership um, with uh, Gary, who's a business partner in the in Amazon, and he had already sort of figured out Lita. He was trying to figure out a branding angle, and he really sort of liked the, the Greek mythology, and so Lita comes from. Greek okay. mythology and kind of tying it into art and beauty. And so the, he, he kind of sort of put it together from an artist perspective in his own mind. And I, I liked it. I was like, I think this really, really is an easy narrative to build around and kind of drawing on the mythology angle. Uh, and so art. Lita, Lita is the mother of somebody or something. Lita is the mother of Helen of Troy. Of a goose. How does a goose come into? Uh, Zeus <laughs> becomes <laughs> a swan because he's so oh. magnificent and oh. to, to woo her so it, he becomes the swan in the story and okay they, so you got a swan and you got lita who, yeah so okay. the swan and the logos is related to, to lita okay. uh because that's zeus and he comes in and then eventually uh they get together and there's an egg and the egg is helen of troy she's the most beautiful woman in the world and so beauty okay. and so that's how it all kinds of put from the art okay. angle swirls together it all does. Yeah. And it's worked really well. And it almost yeah. is a really fun sort of narrative around that. And so you guys developed the, Gary had the name idea and then he had the logo done and you joined him after that was already set up. Is that Yeah. Right? That right. was pretty much already sort of in there and we kind of just expanded it a little bit and took, took it a little bit further and kind of pushed yeah. it forward. And, and even the, the branding, the logo actually came inspiration from an old German beer, uh, Okay. logo like so how it kind of fits together with that was was kind of fun too and then it was just uh, a logo conversation and, and process which we'll talk about here in a minute yeah. you guys and, have a good logo um sorry i didn't mean to interrupt no but, no and, and uh, with the same process that we came to get that logo we're gonna talk about how people can implement that yeah uh, okay. today so that'd be cool and then the other brand is the old boy brand and that that brand actually you through swag like, for that or laying around right here you can show us um some. I you think I gave it all away. I, yeah, I usually yeah, I'm wearing the swag, but I, I gave it away. Um, yeah. We it went through a bunch of iterations. This this brand, 
like it started initially as in this it's a skateboard product and it's bearing that you plug into your wheels and go faster and longer and it uh, started off as like mean skates and then i never really liked that idea it was mean, kind of like m-e-a-n yeah like oh that's okay. mean which yeah. i was like i don't do people even say that it sounded yeah. dumb and eventually i was like no nah, i hate this too much like you, there's like some <laughs> levels of like stuff you're just not like sure about <laughs> yeah. and then you're like but, but then no. as you sit with it longer you like hate yeah. it more and more and that's right. never a good sign for your right. brand and i was like this is dumb and the more i thought about it, the dumber it got and then i was yeah. like no nah. I was like, we're not doing this. So we scrapped that idea. And then we sort of pitched it with the idea of Ra, R-A, mm -hmm. the Egyptian sun god. Okay, I was like, well, sure. we sort of really leaned into mythology and the art. Can we kind of take that to the other way? And as I thought more about that, I was like, it's going to be a little bit more confusing with like Ra as an R-A-W, like Ra. Yeah. And I was like, nah, it doesn't really sort of fit. I mean, we can kind of get around egyptian mythology around that but i don't know if that's cool enough or yeah. like trendy enough to really sort of be a catching yeah. up brand and then eventually we kind of land on the idea of like there's a there's a skater who's, who's fairly he's pretty famous his name's chris haslam and he's an older guy he's one of the more original og skater crowd but he always rocks like a big beard usually right yeah. and he's got a huge following on it on social media and youtube and stuff like that and we're like what if it was like more like the old guy vibe then we're like mm -hmm. we, tied into um sort of the hipster beard trend yeah, yeah. And, and yet we kind of rock it with like the old and we're like that could kind of be cool like a chris haslam sort of vibe and so that's what we end up doing with old boy and so old boy is literally just like we have a beard logo we have some yeah. triangle but but it's cool because the packaging that we actually have um is this sort of clear triangle that we suspend yeah. the bearings in and it looks very very cool visually but that came from the whole Egyptian angle initially when we were talking oh. about going to Egypt because it's a pyramid and oh. we were kind of cool in that. But then like once we got into it, we're like, well, that really does look cool. Let's put our new logo on it and, and yeah. use it. And so it kind of went through this process and it ended up being really, really good. Your packaging for that brand is super legit. It, and it's so the I best didn't packaging never, in the industry. I never heard about the pyramid angle from the original brand right. idea, but that's very cool how you wove it into you, you like kept something that was it cool. Did, yeah. About yeah. The because iteration, yeah. as we were going through it, we're like, yeah, well, this is still cool. Regardless of what we do with the name, the yeah. concept of this, the packaging and being so unique yeah. and now patented um, is what was, I was like, well, this is cool. This gives yeah. us a, a, because in essence, you, you don't functionally change the, the science and the product of it being a bearing like the bearing technology we're not making yeah. any drastic improvements to right. uh, the actual physical technology so it's a straight it's the private same label thing. play yeah it's a straight private label brand positioning packaging play right. yeah in which we are trying to sort of carve out a bit of the angle yeah with that and so far that that's working working well yeah uh one fun little story about your Lita art supply logo, you know, um, I like the blacklist show a lot. And so I was watching it. What last year, when was this like last year? Yeah. And, and, um, so I was watching it and there was this storyline where there was this person looking for some, uh, somebody's notebook or something like that. And, um, so then they dig through this box, they pull this open and just it flashes as they open this journal. And I was like, was that Kyle's logo? Was that Lita? And so then I rewound it and I looked and sure enough, it was the Lita art journal being used in the blacklist TV show as a prop. But yeah. the logo you, I mean, like the logo was, it was in the show enough to sure. obviously. And so we stopped and took a screenshot and stuff, but um, you know, that to me was a good example of the, power of a logo and just as a example it's just in your journal is almost like an embossed imprint it's yeah, not really yeah. a flashy thing at all on the cover it's more like very super subtle yeah um and so it was uh it's a good example to me of an effective logo because it was immediately 
Uh, yeah. Okay. So it's the, the you can see the wings yeah. like that. Yeah. So this is so there's a wrap where it's covered, yeah. and this is actually okay. an older version. This is a yeah. much smaller. Yeah. So down book. at the bottom, you can see that embossed section on like by your by yeah. your fingers. It's basically, that was all I saw and, on yeah. the TV show, and I was like, oh, that's got to be, that's got to be a Lita journal, and yeah, so yes, good example of brand. Okay. So for Pixie Fair, um, you know, we had been selling online under Liberty Jane Patterns dot com for like three years and uh there were limitations of that idea and we wanted to come up with a web a e-commerce website that was a more marketplace that was more think along the lines of etsy or craftsy that kind of thing where it was you know a lot of different sellers not just our own brand which is liberty jane and uh so we wanted to have a name that was unique and um so we went on a journey of trying to just brainstorm. And so um, we wanted to reference a few things. One thing we wanted to be was a marketplace. So the word marketplace is boring. So we thought, okay, what, what versions of the concept of a market, a maker space, a maker fair. And then we were like fair. Okay. So that's kind of got a British vibe to it. Um, and you know, like state fairs are one thing, but like the, you know, then the old English use of it is sort of a different vibe. And then we also had the idea that, you know, our category is for small items. It's like stall close size stuff. And so we wanted some reference to small scale. Um, and so we were trying to brainstorm what's small that's not boring. Mm -hmm. And so we brainstormed a bunch of words and then somebody said pixie pixies are small and they're like pixie fair and you're like okay that's definitely and you know the whole time we're like is this unique is it memorable is it interesting will it stick in the mind of somebody is and so um so we liked it and so we you know at the point where we like the name then you go through a whole exercise where you say uh is it easily confused with something else is it easily misspelled uh, it, you know, is it even, and, and so if you can get past that, and in our case, you could misspell both pixie and fair. So that mm -hmm. was sort of a, you know, old boy in your case for your brand is not easily misspelled in any way, no. but pixie fair could be easily misspelled. So we, you know, we debated that. And then the question, once you get past just liking the name is, um, is it legally available? And is it baggage free? You know, can, can you actually use it? And so you want to go through a process of discovery in terms of the trademark. Uh, is it, is it available? That kind of thing. And sorry, my dog's saying hello. Um, and, uh, and then on the other social, on the social sites, you know, vanity metrics, the vanity URLs, that kind of thing, uh, are, is the name available on every social platform? Um, and so, so the process steps you have to go through, uh, it really, you know, you, you want to do it right. You want to, from the beginning, mm -hmm. find out whether it's available. The trademark process, well, well, so let me just say a few things about the name strategies, um, too. Um, you know, there's about a dozen different name strategies you can come up with. Um, and there are examples of each, and I just mentioned a few of them. Um, you know, when you make up your own word, your own, like a new word that's never been used before, mm -hmm. uh, it's called a neologism and a new word that's Latin for new word. Uh, and so that's a, that's a branding strategy. It's a completely new word. No one's ever heard of. That's fine. Ideally it'll be short you know, <laughs> and available. Mm -hmm. And uh, so a neologism is a way to go. Right. But the problem with a neologism is there's no, reference to anything in it it's like mm -hmm. what does it mean well it only means what you can make people think it means yeah and and what they'll remember um so that's sort of the downside and then there's you know names that are abbreviations or portmanteaus which was where you put two words together mm -hmm. so like microsoft is a good example of microprocessor and software so mm -hmm. microsoft um portmanteau uh is is that style and then you can do a co-opted name or where you just take a name and you make it make sense for your business. The best example of that, of course, is Amazon. Amazon was a river mm -hmm. before it was a e-commerce website. Mm -hmm. Now, if you people, if you say to people, Hey, have you heard of Amazon? They, they would, 
I think probably nine times out of 10 think the e-commerce site, not the river. Right. Exactly. Google was a math term before it became Google. Uh, the Googleplex is actually a math term and the headquarters for Google uh, down in Atherton or Menlo Park yeah. is called the Googleplex. Mm-hmm. Um, so those are co-opted names. Uh, you know, they, they've, they've uh, been used, you know, to become something different. Um, and then a descriptive name is another opportunity. You can just literally have a very specific name that describes something. Um, Pixie Fair is sort of a twist on a descriptive name because it actually, you wouldn't know what we were describing. But once you know what we do on the site, it kind of makes yeah. a descriptive sense. Sure. Um, but Whole Foods is a classic descriptive name. Mm-hmm. You know, it, they're telling you what they're doing. It's healthy, you know, food. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, descriptive names are pretty common too. So you've got all these different options and there's a whole bunch more. There's like a dozen or more mm-hmm. uh, names. And um, we go through all this in our branding course that um, we should mention too, by the way. Um, yeah. But uh, so you've got these options and you've got to sort out what's memorable, available, and, you know, is going to make sense. And uh, people get this wrong a lot. Uh, you and I have coached and consulted with a lot of companies mm-hmm. <laughs> at this point. And, you know, when you hear a good brand name, it just clicks. Oh, no, yeah. And you're like, wow, that's a nice name. And you hear a bad one. And, freak- and sometimes you hear a bad one and you think, mm, is this good? I'm not sure. And after a while, you think, no, that's not good. Yeah. And then other times you hear a name and you're like, oh, my gosh, that's horrible. Um, and sometimes yeah. people are really married to these ideas. Um, you know, you also want to make sure it's baggage free. I always tell yeah. the story without naming the, the brand name. But when we were starting out, we um, had a competitor and uh, the competitor had u- chosen their daughter's name. And we did that, too, for Liberty Jane. That's our daughter's name. But the, this competitor had chosen their daughter's name. And um, if you Googled it, there was actually a story that was all about an exorcism that was the same name (laughs) as their brand name. And so the whole, so you would get this mixed set of results that was either about the product or about this horrible satanic exorcism type demon like weirdo thing. And so you know, it's a good example of having a baggage associated with the name. And, and I always say to people when we're talking with coaching clients about this stuff, there are so many trigger words, mm-hmm. uh, double entendres, um, dog whistles, so you name it what you want, but it, it's basically the idea that there are words that are used by some segment of the society that you're not aware of their usage. And yeah. you really have to, you have to really take your time and make sure there is no baggage associated with your, your name idea. Uh, that's an important step. And sometimes if you get that wrong, you, it's embarrassing, you know, and you have to kind of start over once you realize you've stepped into a, a, a poorly uh, or a, a baggage laden, you know, word choice. Um, yeah. So, so anyway, these are all thoughts and ideas that go into, um, you know, creating the brand. Um, so let's, let's pause on that. I think that's probably plenty. And other thoughts on that, though, before we move on to talk about the logo? Let's talk a little bit about logo, too. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I think it all comes part of basically sort of the four elements of branding, which you go into uh, a lot of detail on in your branding for e-commerce course, which is available on Udemy. And we can put the link in there and encourage you sure. if you're yeah. interested in branding or you haven't, or, you know, you're like, you want to learn more about it. This is really uh, yeah. a, a really great resource for that. I think uh, it's pretty, it's really clear. It's very actionable. It really helped you get clarity around uh, the different brand concepts that you need to have a, a really solid brand. Cause you can have a name and you can even have a logo, yeah. Yeah. but that doesn't necessarily give you a brand. And I think that's uh, worthwhile. And of course really goes into that. But one of the core features of, of having a brand is sort of one of the visible elements, which is the logo. And a lot of yeah. people have the struggle and a challenge in coming up with um, a decent looking yeah. logo that just doesn't look like they opened up a word and put together yeah. some, some word art uh, right. to make that work. So what would you recommend people in terms of a, a steps to yep. developing a logo? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people can get it wrong on the logo side too. And I, I would say that 
um, just as a general commentary, a lot of people get it wrong with logos by trying to do too much. Yeah. They just literally, they're just trying to pack in too much visual stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's very interesting these days to go to the, a big mall and look at all of the logos on the biggest brands. And what you'll find is that they are super efficient and elegant with mm -hmm. their, what they're doing. Sometimes, yeah. I mean, in brutally simplistic. It's really interesting that some mm -hmm. of the most luxurious brands, if you look at their actual logo, it's super, super simple. Yeah. And um, so I think a lot of amateurness is actually is, is, is overdoing mm -hmm. elements um, and the subtlety and the sophistication of a really well done brand speaks for itself. Um, so, you know, and then the question is, well, what, how do you get a brand uh, or sorry, sorry, logo made? Um, and so the logo making process basically falls into three buckets in my Mm -hmm. my view um, to get it done. Sure. One is DIY, do it yourself. Um, you can go to Canva and use Canva for free to make your logo. Um, and you know, I've tried it all, man. I'm a DIY guy at heart. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you know, I, I've done all of these three things. Um, but the first one is DIY. And um, if you have a really good eye for design and that kind of thing, you might get away with that. Um, uh and, you know, or if you have no money then, and you need a logo, then, you know, you can definitely start there. If you ever looked at the Apple corporate logo, the first one they did, <laughs> comically stupid, but uh, it's like a, a Newton underneath a tree with an mm -hmm. apple falling on his head. And it was made by like Steve Jobs' friend or something like that. And they had it for like a year or two, you know, so, so yeah. it does, you don't have to feel like you, you know have to have it right from the beginning but you know if you have to have a logo and you don't have any money at all then go to canva and make one mm -hmm. um they have templates um but if you do have a little bit of money and you want to have a designer be involved and you're you're very very constrained on your budget you can go to fiverr and have somebody make a logo frequently they'll just be using canva templates <laughs> but you know so but you know they know how to do it and so yeah. um and you know so you can pay five to what fifty dollars through Fiverr.com, um, and you'll get something. Now, I've when I've said that before, I've actually had people who I think were designers call me out and say, "How dare you suggest people use Fiverr for logo? It's just garbage." You know, you just. But I'm a real pragmatist. You know, if you mm -hmm. if you have to have a logo and you've got twenty five dollar budget, then get a logo for twenty five dollars. Yeah, for sure. You know, I mean, just make it happen. Don't let uh, some snobbery or some perceived like whatever stop you just get it done. So, so yeah. that's the second bucket. And that's the, I would call that inexpensive bucket. And then the, the more expensive bucket would be like 99 designs, mm -hmm. which I've used um, for book covers, for logos. We just did a logo campaign um, that finished last week for a brand that we own. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so that was fun on the Pixie fair side. And uh, so that was fun. And um, it's the way 99 designs works. Just explain to the people who haven't seen it before is you basically describe what you want and, and you'll pay about $300. So just as ballpark. So that's sort of three to $700 for a logo. So, so you describe what you want. They give you kind of things to choose from. Like, do you like this? Do you like this? Do you like this? And so they kind of narrow down what your design eye sort of is for the idea. And then, um, and then you can choose a color palette. So if you know you want it to be in the, purple zone you know you get the color palettes to choose from or you can just say i don't know and then basically it's a co open contest mm -hmm. and all these designers start giving you designs and it's super super fun um to go through the process and uh you know people give you all kinds of ideas and then it starts to spark creativity we're like oh i kind of i hadn't thought of it this way i i kind of like this and you can really zero in on something effective um, through 99 designs. Um, what are your thoughts on, have you used 99 designs before? Or yeah, yeah. yeah. Both of the brands yeah. logos were done through 99 designs. So, yeah. and in fact, what we ended up doing was finding, um, finding our sort of de facto designer through 99 designs. And we actually just pay him through 99 designs whenever we need some sort of higher end stuff. Like he, sure. he ended up doing, uh, not just some of our logo work, but ended up doing some of our um, 
like our layout for our products. So this yep. is kind of like our book wrap that we yep. have. Yep. So you end up doing some layout stuff for that and doing other product insert postcards. Like he sort of kind of became our de facto designer. That's awesome. And uh, and it, he just still works through 99 designs. And we still just pay him yep. whatever he gives us custom quotes on. Um, yep. And it's been really, really great. He's very talented. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good process. Um, okay. So let's talk a little bit about our project we're working on. So obviously mm -hmm. you and I bought a company a couple of weeks ago, Home and Garden America. Mm -hmm. um, and it so had a collection of, uh, it had a Shopify site, collection of products there and a collection of social media, um, you know, yep. sites. Uh, the one that was sort of the anchor of it all was uh, an Instagram account. Um, I think it's up to 164,000 followers now. And it is the happy gardening life. So, um, you know, in terms of the naming opportunities, Home and Garden America has already been sort of looked at and uh, uh, attorney's commentary was that it would be hard to get the registered trademark for that. So That's it was true. sort of a website that we didn't think we could move forward with. So although I like Home and Garden America, it sounds very like better homes and gardens. For sure. Which maybe is the people who would get mad that you use it. I don't know. But um, so, so that to us was a non-starter because it was uh, just, you know, we've been told it was probably not available. We could contest that and look into it, but we kind of figured why do that. Um, and then of course this Instagram accounts, the happy gardening life. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was out there. And uh, as it happens, that one's available broadly. Um, happy gardening life is a long name. Mm hmm and, but it is descriptive. I would put it in the descriptive category name, the happy gardening life. And at first when I heard it, I couldn't remember it. Yeah. It was like the second day I was like, what is that again? I can't remember. Right, Third right, day right. I was like, what is that again? But by the fourth day, once I remembered it, I was like, oh, I, I kind of like it. Mm -hmm. um, and it is a descriptive. It tells you kind of who the audience is. Mm -hmm. um, and so you and I have been sort of, pondering, debating, wondering, is this the brand name? I mean, is this the one to go, go to town with? And so, um, you know, at this point we're thinking it's a long name, but it's a good descriptive name. If it's memorable, you know, it's the mm -hmm. question, but at this point, that's what we're going to move forward with happy gardening life. Um, and so it'd be interesting to hear people's opinion about it, but sure, um, for sure. But so that's the idea of saying, okay, is it available? Yes. Is it a descriptive name? Yes. Is it unique? Yes. Um, it kind of has uh, elements that describe a type of logo or type of brand. Um, the first thing that came to my mind when we started talking about it was the life is good t-shirts mm -hmm. that life is good sort of beach, mm -hmm. you know, the airport, you know, yeah. where you're going to a sunny place, you, you want to buy your life is good t-shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so happy gardening life sort of has that aspect to it, I suppose you could say. Um, and so uh, the logo that's associated with right now is sort of homemade uh, made by, you know, one of the team members and uh, is functional, but I think could be, you know, improved. Um, and so, you know, that's sort of where we're at in the process. And uh, so Next step would for us would be go through either do it yourself, which you won't let me do. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> go and through. I Fiverr. definitely am not going to do it because <laughs> that is not my skill yeah. set. Go through Fiverr, which we don't need to do, or go to Ninety Nine Designs and do a contest. So that's what yeah. we'll be doing. Um, yeah, so that's kind of where we're at on the journey for the uh, Happy Gardening Life, uh, which will be domain name Happy Gardening Life. Uh, and associated social accounts. So that'll be, so we've sort of just shifted. Mm -hmm. We had like, it was almost like it was, you know, constellations out in space. It was like, we had a big planet over yeah. here and a couple other little names uh, over here. And so we just figured, why not just go where the energy is. Right. Um, and uh, go from there. So it'll be, it'll be cool to make the, get the logo made, see if we can have merch come out of it, get something that looks like a cool hat, uh, you know, logo and and uh, maybe some t-shirt logos and that kind of thing um yeah that'd be cool yeah what are your thoughts on it where are you feeling happy gardening life it was long like it. it's long at first it's, it's long it's long but uh i i think it works 
I mean, I think it's already sort of brand that has momentum and people are have some familiarity with it and has a little bit of a following. And yep. I think if you have a brand that works, that has following, that already has momentum, it serves you the best to sort of press into that yeah. and see how far it can take it. Now, does it stay happy gardening life forever? Maybe. And that would be cool. Or maybe if like we come up with a moment of brilliance to bring mm -hmm. everything together in, in the brand and that's how it ends up being. But as it stands right now, if it stayed the happy gardening life for the next 20 years and that grew in terms of its audience, I'd be cool with that. Okay? Yeah. I'm, I'm comfortable with it. So I kind of, the more I've heard it and said it and thought about it, the more I kind of like it. Yeah, for sure. The downside is it's long. And you know, like yeah. my email address, for example, is Jason at, Liberty Jane clothing .com. Mm -hmm. And every time I type that, I think, why did we just, why did we right. include, first of all, why did we include clothing? You know, yeah. it's like, it's just such a long email yeah, yeah. to type out. So, you know, bre brevity is, you know, sort of the challenge for these things. And yep. candidly, you know, 25 years ago, it's a lot easier to get a very short, uh, you know, name, sure. descriptive name. Um, and if you want some of those now, you pay for them if they're available, yep. if they're not used. Um, yeah. And so there's, uh, you know, a huge market for high quality names that are super brief and descriptive. Um, and, uh, you know, they're not cheap. So, you know, I mean, I think the, the trade off is it was available because it's so long. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think the question will be whether we can really build a brand logo concept around it that looks the part, mm -hmm. looks happy, but professional. And uh, so that'll be interesting to see if we can pull it together, but that'll be our next step. So once we, uh, once we do that, we'll obviously we'll point people to it and show people the, the, you know, before and after logo. Uh, we'll also put in the show notes mm -hmm. uh, images of your brands. Sure. So people can see them and Pixie fair brand. And then um, a link to the, you know, branding for e-commerce uh, class that's on Udemy. It's frequently on sale. Usually it's like yeah. 10 bucks. Anytime I look, it's like 10 bucks on Udemy. Sure, sure, yeah. So it's not like a big outlay or anything like that to go into the full training. And I don't remember, but it might be three or four hours. I can't remember exactly how long it is um, of, of brand focused training. And we go into all these topics in a lot more thoroughness. Um, but yeah, man, good topic. Uh, so if you're watching this and you're struggling with your brand, hopefully this has been helpful. Um, and would really, really love to see you get it sorted out, mm -hmm. get your brand on track and connected to some solid sales and really get your e-commerce business growing and scaling. And that's what we're all about. Um, mm -hmm. and so thanks for hanging out with us. Um, I'm going to wrap it up here unless there's any other thoughts for the good of the order. I think we're good to go. So go use the link below. If you have never used 99 designs before, go check it out. Yep. And uh, definitely check out the brand free commerce course. It's massive value if you can get it for 10 bucks on Udemy. If you want access to all of our training in one fail swoop, you can oh, do yeah. that through uh, the inner circle, which is we'll also have a, a link there too. It tells you more about what that is about. And uh, it gives you uh, access to everything, a smorgasbord yep. Of, yep. Uh, of trainings that you can kind of pick and choose. And then also access to our monthly trainings that we do live as well. And you can sign up for that at winningonshopify.com. Look in the yes. menu and there's inner circle. Yeah. Okay. So that's the best way to get access to all of our trainings. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. So take, go ahead and take a sampler at uh, the e-commerce course uh, on Udemy. And if you're like, hey, this is good, you can go, uh, go feast on everything else that's there. Uh, no doubt. In inner circle. So. All right, man. Hey, I hope you have a fantastic weekend. I heard you're going to the zoo because you told me that right before. We were I going. am. I'm literally getting off this call, jumping have in the car, fun, going man. over to the zoo and take, hanging out with the kiddo. And we're going to go hang out. It's a nice day. Take a lot of photos. Definitely. Awesome. All right, man. Good All times. Right. See you. Bye.